Hi, everyone who's here so far. Just waiting for everyone to come in. Hey, Brooke, how's it going? It's good to see you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yes. Hey, I can hear you. You can hear me now. Okay. Great. Super. It yeah, just I'm good. Brooke. Oh my yeah. gosh. It's been so long. No, I know, Joanne. It's good to see you. Yeah. How have you been? Uh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Busy. Um, crazy times the last three years, but luckily, um, haven't gotten sick and, uh, been, been, been good. That Thank is you awesome. Asking. Yeah. I like your background back there. Thank you. It is, uh, it's Google Zurich, I think. It's like their little pods that they have for, oh. you know, just for work in the Google office in Zurich. Hey, that, that was very convincing. You know, that background was very convincing because I thought that was the background in your university or something. I was like, wow, that looks super, super That would dope. be super cool. And yeah. because we, we started off the semester on Zoom, I got all these cool backgrounds to put behind me to make it a little more interesting. So move. that's a smart move. Yeah, great. Mainly okay. for myself, I think. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I appreciated it. So I'm sure everyone else does also. Yeah. But um, I have uh, combined the, I actually have two sections and I told everyone at eight to come at 10. Most people can make it. Uh, some people couldn't, but it, we have a great number of people here. Um, this is so great. It's awesome to see you, Brooke, because I think the last time I actually saw you, we were on a plane coming back from China. Huh. Yeah, was that the last time? Um, yeah, maybe I think it in was. person, you know, I think I've, well, I've definitely seen you on LinkedIn, which doesn't really count. <laughs> yeah, but true. I feel like I've been in touch with some people remotely through LinkedIn, just mm -hmm. like a sort of idea of what people are doing. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really great to have you here, everybody. Um, Brooke and I worked together at Acme Made about a long time ago. I won't really say how long ago, <laughs> but uh, it was really great. And I just, when I thought about, I kind of went through my Rolodex of who could I bring on who's amazing at Photoshop. And um, I just immediately thought of Brooke. So oh. one great thing about teaching has, has been that I've been able to reconnect with people that I worked with in the past. It's okay. given me a really good um, reason to reach out to people, which has been really great. So, um, Brooke is now you're in Detroit, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I am. I'm in, um, I'm in Detroit, uh, the motor city, uh, because I moved, uh, 2008 or 2009, that recession hit San Francisco. And, um, you know, I don't know about you, Joanne, but, uh, for me as a freelancer, all the work dried up. And so I decided to move to Detroit and do a master's here. Um, so that was 2010 and graduated 2012, so that's why I'm in Detroit. Um, had to, I had to, um, that, that recession or depression, whatever it was, uh, I, I figured wait it out and do a master's and, and uh, meet, meet some contacts. And so, yeah, that's why, that's why I'm here in Detroit, as I was saying. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, this is great. Uh, everyone here is a first year at San Jose State and great. this class is portfolio class number one. They actually do four portfolio classes each year. Um, and so we're just learning basic, honestly, it's pretty basic Photoshop, but I wanted them to have much more inspiration from someone who knows Photoshop better than me. So that's why you're here. And then we're gonna do uh, our po portfolio layouts and InDesign and mm -hmm. it's putting all the work they have done so far together. So that's kind of the point of this whole semester, but um, I would love to just turn it over to you, Brooke, and <clears throat> you can uh, take them through whatever Photoshop excitement you have today. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Joanne. That's uh, it's my, my, my pleasure, especially to um, talk with a new set of kids uh, and a new school. I've never spoken with, um, you know, San Jose University. So thank you, Joanne and, and um, students. As Joanne said, my name is Brooke. And... Uh, I also teach, but only part-time at the College of Creative Studies in Detroit. And currently this semester I'm teaching product design, but sometimes I teach transportation design, 
and sometimes I teach uh, fashion accessories design. So um, I'm really in that product design mode now. So great timing, Joanne <laughs> picked me at a great time because I'm very, I'm on a project right now, which I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm just gonna demonstrate um, some, what you can do in Photoshop. Just, I've only got a limited time of less than an hour, but I'm gonna show you a real project that I'm working on currently. And it's basically, um, I'm as I'm in Detroit, I work for a lot of the automotive companies and uh, do product design and aut automotive design. But in this particular case, I am working on speaker speakers for the audio systems in cars. And you know these things, the, the speaker that's down at your ankle, you know, sometimes it's on the dashboard, sometimes it's in the A pillars, you know, these speaker systems. And um, so I'm working on um, some proposals for that right now. So it's a blend of product design and a little transportation design, but it's very producty. And so um, I'll give you a taste of what I do. Um, so it's going to be pretty intense. And I'm not going to be sh sharing with you all of the buttons and what to press because it's just too much in an hour. But I'm just going to do a kind of a an overview to show you what is possible in Photoshop. So, OK, bear with me. Um, and I have my um, this. I was working on some doodles on another concept or, or on some concepts for um, for these speakers, you know, this is for the ankle speaker, the speaker that kind of sits perhaps in the door down, uh, you know, at your ankle height, which is a bass speaker. So um, I'm using that as a bass, and then I would do a tweeter, and then I would do other um, uh, other speakers that are located in the car. But I need one design focus, one one design idea, and then I can translate that to all the other different speakers. So that's why I'm focusing on this bass one, because it's big and it's gnarly. And um, so anyway, without any without any further ado, I'm glad I'm glad your school uses Zoom because I use Zoom too. So I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, let me just shut down my email and I'll share my screen with you. Uh, I'm going to share this one with you. Hey, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Oh, um, Joe, am I sharing? Hey, you tell me, am I sharing my screen? Or... Yeah, so we see your um, oh, empty screen. Empty screen right now. I guess you're, you're sharing your, your desktop, I yes. think. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm starting Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to start off with a new document. Okay, and I'm going to kind of churn through quickly because this is supposed to be a little bit of an entertaining movie for um, for you guys. So, um, so here we go. I'm, I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to go boom, boom, boom. All right, file, uh, new. Um, so we always work in generally we work in A3 or tabloid size paper for um, for our projects, um, and then we also generally work in landscape format. So um, I'm doing landscape A3 create. So this is a new new um, new document. It has this grid on here, um, but I don't want the grid. I'm gonna take the grid off, Control H takes the grid off. I just need a blank sheet of paper. Next, I have, um, I have, okay, I'm stopping my share. So I'm just showing you. So I, as I say, in my sketchbook, I've got, um, I've got a lot of stuff in my sketchbook, but this is the one I was just working on before on class. And I'm going to take a photograph of that. And I really like to show the complete process um, using, you know, all the way from my hand sketch all the way to using my phone. I'm going to take a photo with my phone and um, show you exactly how I go through the whole process. And so, okay. So, by the way, when you take a photo of your sketches to scan in, uh, to put into Photoshop or whatever, do a good photograph, please. I mean, because some students don't, don't do it. They, they're careless. And um, they, some students, when they don't know until I teach them, they, they have shadows. It's all like at an angle, it's all messed up. Um, so please, when you do a photo and you start, you know, get as good a photo as you possibly can because um, it's, it's gonna make a big difference in your presentation and you've gotta look good. And so, you know, take a couple of snaps, no shadows, no wrinkles, no cat um, paws or nothing around. So. Um, okay, so I've got it on my phone. I'm going to now airdrop it. So I'll now share my screen again. Share screen. There we are. Desktop two. Here I am. You can see my screen, hopefully. And I'm going to share my image, airdrop it onto my computer. 
There I go. And um, Brooks Mac. Okay, it should be coming in. Where is it? I've got two screens here. Oh, there it is. Okay, here it is. I'm going to um, drag this into Photoshop. Okay, there's my sketch. Huh, there I was. Look at me. I'm such a hypocrite because I've got a shadow on there. Not a problem. Um, that's not so bad. I'm not going to redo the photo, but generally be careful with your photos. Make sure they're in focus as well. So at least it's in focus. Now, first step is to make it truly black and white, or maybe not. I'm going to keep this raw. Normally, I like to make it truly black and white. Currently, okay, I am going to make it black and white. Mode, grayscale, so I take all the color away. Discard the color, so I can't get reds, I can't get greens. It's just pure tonal black and white. All right. Um, I would sometimes, now I'm just going to go, go quick on this little demonstration on this particular little demo. Duplicate my photo, my um, photograph because in case I screw up, I, I'll always have a copy backup. So here it is. Sometimes I will set up my drawing like this. I will go to adjustments, levels, and, um, and I will try to make it really literally black and white, you know, without any grays in there. So, you know, I'll, I'll really, you know, except for that little stupid shadow down at the bottom right. But um, you see, so this is very clean and I like this a lot, but I can save time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes, okay. But you know what? It's very clean and very nice, but I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use this one because I'm gonna duplicate it because I'm gonna, I don't want to screw it up, screw it up. I, because it's half rendered, because I, it's not, it's half rendered because there's a gray background. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, um, you know, increase the, the contrast so much. This has no background, it's white background. Well, now I've got a gray background, I'm half rendered. So I'll show you what I mean. All I have to do is add black and white to this. So speaker concepts, you can see basically how, um, what they are. Okay, great. Let's make a new, new layer. I always make new layers and I work like a factory. I work, I, I do all, um, I do like all, I do repetitive parts on different, on different stages. So here we go. I have a, I have a, personally have a Wacom Cintiq and I have a pen, but I'm not going to use the pen for this part yet. I'm going to use my mouse and I'm going to just drop in. Let's just test my mouth there. I'm testing my airbrush because I'm using a brush here, brush right here. I'm using an airbrush right in here, airbrush. But I need to turn down the volume of the airbrush, uh, the opacity, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little splotch of black on each, on each concept. And that's why I'm using the mouse. Sometimes the, sometimes the pen the stylus on the Wacoms is a little bit, it's a little bit hit and miss. So at least the mouse, I'm pretty sure it's going to be hit, hit. And okay, just a little, little coloring on each concept. I think I did everything okay. Okay, there we go. So that's the first step. Next step is coloring. I'm going to, I'm going to start coloring, not with color, but with white. I'm just, it's, it's nice to work in black and white when you're first starting uh, your sketches because color is a pain in the neck to add and render. Um, you always add, I always add it later. It's most important right now to get the, to get the, the light sources and, and things consistent before you get into color. So I need a light source for all of these so, I, so they all remain consistent. So my light source up here, I'm gonna do, I, I have a brand new layer. And I'm going to go to over here um, in, in this little thing right here that you use all the time. Um, I'm going to click on white right here. It's white on top. You can see that white on top and a big airbrush. That's why I have such a big brush right here. And I have airbrush show. I'm going to go really big. And this really uses a lot of memory on your computer. So anyway, I'm, I'm now you can see I'm just kind of touching a little bit. I'm, and that's going to be my light source. Now down here. I'm going to make a new layer down here. I'm going to go black. So down up here, I'm going to switch this around. Oops, there we go. So now it's black on top. So that means it's black. 
um, and just a little bit down here. So now I have a light source. I have, let's just make my brush go down so I can explain a little bit. As I say, it uses a lot of your, your computer's memory by um, those big brushes. So light source up here. And so it's darker down here. That's why I did that. Uh, okay, I'm covering up some of my sketches. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my sketch. You know what, I, I'm gonna take this one. Luckily I did this. It's funny because every time I do a sketch, I always do something a little bit different. It's not always the same. Um, and so this is an example. So let me turn this to multiply, turn it down a little bit because I need it to have, uh, no, it's fine. Okay, it's a little dark and intense, but it's fine. All right, now I'm gonna start, actually I'm gonna put it underneath. No, no, my bad, right here. Okay, so next I'm going to make a new layer and I'm gonna start coloring in all the reflections and all the shadows. And so let's start off with the shadows. So with shadows, shadows are normally dark. So I have black right here. Oh, let me turn on my cursor. I got a, I got this nice little tool for when I teach. Um, uh, go um, applications. It's called cursor or something cursor. I forgot to turn it on. Sometimes I forget to turn this on. Cursor Pro, yes, there we go. So now you can see a little more clearly what I'm doing and where I am. So anyway, I'm black, I'm going black. I'm going to go with a brush. Um, where's the brush? Right here, a hard brush. And, and I'm gonna crank this up 100%. I've got a new layer here, but I'm gonna crank this down. You'll see why I'm doing this. Test, I'm gonna test, there I'm testing. That is gonna be all my shadows. Just hard shadows, no airbrushes. So here I'm going, I'm, I'm bringing the brush size down. And um, you'll start to see my buildup of shadows. It's, it's kind of subtle, a little bit subtle. There, um, right on here, you'll definitely see it. And inside here, maybe inside here, there's a little mouth there, inside the speaker where it's the shadows cast, because notice, my light is up here, so my light is always going to remain consistent, and all my shadows are going to be underneath the light source. So there, I'll just put that in here. I might even do a couple little funny ones like that. I'll put in some stuff under that speaker, under this speaker, right in here, and right in here. And if I want to crank this up and I want to make the shadow stronger, I can easily do that. And actually, that's looking pretty good, so I'm going to keep that. And this is because this is my... Um, layer uh, opacity adjust. So, you know, have it a little bit halfway, I guess 47, 50% is good. Uh, continue, just blocking in the shadows. Right in here, and in here, up here, there, 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 there. And this is just the easiest way. This is how you churn drawings out real quick, real fast, um, and, and have a very effective coloring technique. And I love it, it's very easy. It's very graphic too. You know, you have to get your graphic head design on. When you're a product designer, car designer, or any of these, a designer, <laughs> it's not just about products. It's also about, you have to do graphics and so, in a way, I'm rendering with a graphic type of mentality. I'm trying to create stylish shadows and stylish artwork. But, um, you know, that, I don't know, maybe it's, some people have different opinions, but that's my opinion. That's how we teach at our school, anyway. Okay, so, continuing on. There's some shadows. Oh, I'm gonna change my brush because here I've got some curvature and I could just block it in, but I could, I see an opportunity to, um, to, to use some gradation. So instead of just a block color, I'm gonna use this little guy right here. And this is what it does. See, it's a dark and then light. So I'm gonna 
just do it, do this in here. I, I'm starting dark, pressing hard, and then as I go up, it's getting lighter. So it gives a little bit more funk to the, the to instead of it being just block color all the time. Um, and I'm just going to keep using this brush now that I have it open because I don't want to keep opening brushes all the time. And oh, and this is a good opportunity to use that pressure sensitivity hard and then soft. So that's a very nice opportunity. Um, hard and soft. Um, also with the speaker, it's, I know this looks like a mess, but uh, soft, hard, soft, and down here. Uh, so as I say, my light source is up here, as you know. I'm gonna color in this, and then I'm gonna slowly fade up. And where else do I need shadows? I'm basically good for now. Hey, by the way, this is just a range of thumbnails. This is not, I would present this as a range of ideas, very loose ideas to my boss um, before I get hot and heavy on some serious renderings because I need to get his or her permission, not permission, but I don't wanna waste time and I don't wanna waste his or her money. So I would say, hey, what do you think of any of these? Anything, any of these cool? And if they say, yeah, go with this one, then I'll be like, good. And then I can focus and do that one instead of doing something that they won't like. So I would show them these roughs. Now I'm, I'm, I, made, I made a new layer. Now I'm gonna use, I'm, this is gonna be my white layer. Let's test it out. Yep, there's white. And it should be that brush there. It's darker and lighter. So it has pressure sensitivity. So this is gonna be a great, great brush. Um, and I'm gonna move my layer underneath my line work. So, wait, wait. Basically, hold on. Oh, no, 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 that's not it, um, right here. This is my, yep, there it is. This is my line drawing. And I'm gonna go underneath that with this white because you'll see why now, because I'm gonna go, I'm gonna light. So you can still see my line drawing, you know? If I, didn't do that. If, I, if I'm drawing on top of my line drawing, look, I'm covering up my lines, which I don't want to right now. Um, so that's why I'm gonna go underneath. And so I'm pressing hard and then I'm going light as I go back. It just gives it a more pop next to my eye. This is the part nearest me. This, uh, this part's nearest me, this is farthest away from me. And that's why I'm fading it off as it goes, or goes uh, away from me. And here's another one. Okay, I'm gonna go hard. And then as I go away, I'm lightening up and going softer. It gives it a nice little dimension. It's subtle. And I'm gonna do that with all of these upward facing surfaces. This one's flat, so I'm just gonna keep it flat. And this, I might use an airbrush on this one. No, you know what, I'm not. I'm gonna use an eraser. So this is how I'm gonna do this one. Um, I'm gonna go light. And then as I go around, hard. And as I go back down, light, and I'm just gonna erase out with a Cintiq and with a pen uh, that goes with the Cintiq, you can erase, there's an eraser. Oh, um, firstly, let me set my eraser up. Right here's the eraser. I don't want it soft, I want it hard. So I'm gonna go here. And now my eraser is set up and now I can erase out very quick. Oh shoot, that's, um, okay, eraser. I want it hard, that's the, Hard eraser, and let me test it. Oh, now why am I having a problem? Eraser, hard eraser. Okay, now let me try it. There we go, there we go. Took me a few, a few goes. Um, so let's make that brush a little bit smaller, and now I can erase out. Okay, and um, yeah, that's quite effective. So let's just do another, um, Let's try this again. This brush is working real nice for me. Uh, B for brush is a shortcut. There, okay, up here, I'm gonna do hard at the top and light as I go down. Hard at the top and light as I go down. So these are like fins, like gills, I guess, on a, on a, on a shark. Okay. 
that. And then also there's this surface up here. I'm gonna make a new layer because I'm gonna have some interference with this guy on top right there. So I'm gonna to have to erase this out. That's why I made a new layer um, because, uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, let's keep going. What are we doing now? Okay, some stuff over here. Let's put on some reflections over here. Hard and then soft as you go down that way. So it's the pressure sensitivity on the these things is very nice. I don't know if you have Cintiqs, probably do. I'm using the wrong brush. I just realized. Yes, no wonder I'm using because look at this. Look at this brush. I now realize it's a little late, but see, it's 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 that's what I call the sausage brush because it makes a sausage. I don't want that. I want this one where it's just doesn't change shape. And I want that pureness. So I knew there was something weird going on, but it's fine. So I'm going to go press hard here. And as I go down, I'm going to make it softer because my light source is up here. Same here. And um, this piece here. Um, it's getting quite a high impact. You know, it's kind of getting um, a very high contrast. High contrast. It's actually quite nice um, on, on um, no, I don't know. I, I think the high contrast looks cool. Uh, okay, now we're, oh, here we go. I think I'm gonna use a real airbrush on that. Um, let's see here, there, and then the speaker, there it is. That's the speaker and here I need to do something. I think I'm gonna go hard and then light but erase out where needed. Okay. Um, there's this surface over here. You barely see it underneath my drawing right there. And, oh, this little guy, I forgot about him. Little reflections in here and a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna go back to black, go back to my shadow layer. There we go. Oh, I need some white on that one too. So let's go back there. Forget about, I keep forgetting about a few little pieces. Hard and then soft and erase out. So let's zoom out and just get an over, overview of what's going on. Oh, I need to render this of course. Um, all right, all right, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. What is our time? It's 1.26. You see this very quick type of rendering, and it's by using these um, this this layer stuff um, and being able to turn it down. It's it just is very effective. Okay, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm making new layers all the time because I, I often mess up, and it's just part of. It doesn't matter how many years of experience you have, you're always gonna mess up. I don't care. Even Leonardo da Vinci or masters, great masters, mess up. So I'm always making a new layer just in case, um, <laughs> just in case, because it's inevitable, you will make some mistakes. Um, okay, oh, now here, I was going down to this little guy right here. There's a great thing called rotation, which makes rendering and drawing much easier. So I'm gonna just stroke, stroke that, build it up, and now I'm gonna erase out. And now I did this shape with an airbrush instead of the hard brush, because it's, it's quite a soft shape. This, this one here is quite a soft shape. And so um, I figured it would be more suitable to use a, a, um, an airbrush, a little dash, a little dash right there, a little highlight right in there. You can learn all of the, what I'm doing here on, um, on YouTube, by the way, YouTube is your friend and it sounds like I'm a, I tell my students and I feel, I feel so guilty because I'm supposed to be teaching them. But I tell them, I say, look guys, I can't teach you everything, especially if, if, um, if I'm not there, you know, you guys are doing homework, use YouTube. It's your friend and just YouTube the crap out of everything. And you know what? I have to YouTube all the time because even though I'm a pretty good at Photoshop and I know this, the software pretty well, I'm still YouTubing and asking, how do I do this? How do I do that? So constantly learning, even though I'm an old guy and I've been doing it for 20 years, 
I'm still learning and still Googling the, the you know, it's Googling a lot. Okay, so it's looking pretty good, but let's get into the details now. Okay, so I'm gonna make the new layer and I'm gonna go on top now. I'm going right on top of everything. There, new layer is this little white um, plus thing. Now I'm gonna go with white, of course. Now I'm gonna go with a brush. I'm gonna go with this brush. Um, it's, it's a hard brush. You can see, this is a sausage brush, which I, I was discouraging to use, but look, it's sausage brush because um, the less you the less you press, the smaller it is, and then the harder you press, the wider it is. So it adjusts its width, width based off your pressure. So I'm going to use this, and I'm also going to turn down my opacity, and I'm just going to go in here and just start sketching reflections. And what I mean by that is I'm going to start here. Um, oh, here's a great tip. <laughs> both metaphorically and literally. Um, Photoshop is really hard to do shirt circles with. It's a pain in the neck. You gotta go here, you write in this little thing. You gotta do a lot of time wasting to do circles. And I'm like, hell no, I'm gonna get my circle template. And since I have a Cintiq, basically it's like drawing on paper. I can use this guy and they'll do circles much, much faster. So let me test my pen. Oh shoot, <laughs> I don't want that, I want my pen. A brush, sorry, and get rid of that stupid path. I don't want to use pads right now. Okay, let me test my test my brush. Normally, I like to work at five up here. It's, this is the size of my brush. I want. I normally work at five, and it works exactly the same as zero point five millimeter pencils, zero point seven millimeter pencils, zero point seven millimeter pens. Um, so this is. I just want to show you because there's a direct correlation between Photoshop and, um, and manual materials and uh, analog materials such as pens and stuff. So for example, this, this guy right here. Oh, I need to reverse my screen. Oh, anyway, it's called, it's, it's called a pilot, by the way. It's, um, do you see that, that, that brand pilot? I know it's backwards, but I, I don't want to change my screen. Pilot, and uh, I think it's a V7. I don't know, I can't even, I'm all confused. It's a V7, that means it's 0.7 of a millimeter thick. And so, you know, I, and then also you have your typical pencils, like, uh, oh, here, classic, this is a design classic. Um, these, these pencils, uh, you know, just mechanical pencil, this guy, these, these guys, this is 0 0.5. This is what I normally use if I'm using pencils. See, it says 0.5 on there, backwards. Um, so, the direct correlation with Photoshop is, um, let me just screen share. Come on, where is it? There we go. Okay, direct correlation is, here's my, here's my brush and it's 0.5 and it, it totally matches. I'm, I'm working on A3 paper and um, it's, it's, it's somehow all matches. Okay, so anyway, let's just get back to it. Um, okay, I'm just testing my brush. It's 0.6. I'm cool with 0.6, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go white. So I'm turning it around to white. Let's test it. Yes, and I'm gonna turn up the opacity. It's a little light right now. Let's test it again. And now I can build up. I can. Okay, great. So back to what I was demonstrating using a circle template. Just gonna just. This is just rough sketches. So really, I don't have to be super precise. there. And uh, I'm just going to start taking this down a little bit. There. And I just, I don't know if you can see me on my computer. There you can see me instead of my face. There. <laughs> They're all not very concentric. <laughs> but hey, it's just loose sketches there. And I'm going to go, it's going into deep black hole. Okay, there. It's much easier to use this than it is to, um, to hand draw those circles. All right, now, what else? Okay, since I'm using this little highlighter, 
I want to crank this up more. I, I, I got I to gotta save time, and so I can't keep stroking. So here we go. Let's be for brush. You see how I can put in some highlights? And there we go, rotate around. My light source is coming from the right. So I'm going to put in some highlights around my bolt holes. Um, I'm going to put in some highlights around these parts. This is, I am going to go manual on this because just as easier in this case. Um, where else? Oh, I'm going to put in some highlights in here. This is where material separations and part separations are happening. All right, we're good. And I'm going to, while I'm at it, I might as well start writing annotations or descriptions. So the base is coming out of a little thing there. Um, you can't really see it. OK. Let's go to this one now. I'm going to put in some highlights. And in this case, I'm going to be a little bit slow. Everything doesn't need to line up. One thing I tell my students is don't get too caught up in lining everything up and being too stiff. In my opinion, it's one of the worst things you can do is be too stiff. And you try to be loose, but some people don't agree. And that's fine. You know, everyone has a different opinion. But in my opinion, I will get stiff when I need to in a final rendering or a tight rendering. But at this point, I don't have time to get stiff. So, and by the way, just I, I'm not looking at my Zoom screen. I'm, I'm only looking at my Photoshop. So if you've got questions, you have to shout out because otherwise I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Uh no question, but can you please slow down a little bit? Slow <laughs> down? <Thank> you. <laughs> okay, no. right. Are you guys, well, I'll tell you. It, yeah. It's awesome, Brooke. It is amazing to see. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> but you. guys, keep in mind, you're not going to know, like he said, it's too much to show everything. So you're going to have to Google some of the things to find out on YouTube. Um, but if you have like specific questions like, like when you press B, does it go to the last brush you just used? Is that how that that works? Uh, no. B, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does actually. It does. B okay. is just brush. So yeah, B is just brush, and that's how you quickly change to a brush. Um, but you know, I can answer questions, tech, tech stuff about Photoshop, um, or just general questions. You know, about if you're ever curious about car design, which I'm into right now, or anything. I, I'm, I'm very open. Um, or if you want to know a little bit about Photoshop, that's cool. But as I say, I, our semester is 15 weeks at my school, and I'm, it's going to take me 15 weeks to teach these guys how to use Photoshop and Illustrator. Yeah. And my, my classes are three hours each. So this is just one hour. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's just a snapshot. And ours is, yeah. ours is also 15 or 16 weeks, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is just one hour. So you guys definitely use this time to ask him any yeah key questions and I'll, i will i am recording this oh, and great. brooke i'll send it to you too and you can oh, re-watch it um but yeah go ahead and anybody have any questions uh, i have a quick question so um you mentioned using a circle template earlier yeah. was that on photoshop or oh just on you just putting that on your box yeah okay, just literally putting cool. this on and this is a little trick that I have learned um, just out of default because I'm so frustrated sometimes with Photoshop because it's such a pain to get circles on Photoshop that um, I just like out of instinct, I'm like, well, hell, I've got my, um, my Cintiq. I might as well just use this. And I, I just started using it. And I thought it was, and I have never seen anyone use it before, to be honest. I think that's and a I great tell, idea. <laughs> yeah, awesome. you, because you know, Joanne, how sometimes it's so awkward to get these darn this the path out, you know, do the circles with the path. Yeah. So, oopsie, oopsie. I just started my path. And, well, um, I love so. how you're using the paper. It's so cool to see you work because you're just you're using Photoshop like it's paper, like yes. it's how you would in your in in your analog tools. Yes, which yes. makes the sketch look so much better. I think so. It's really like it's really informative just seeing how you work, like your workflow. Yeah, it's it's so fun to um, well, I, I don't know how your school works, but and, and well, my school is changing. 
Um, we traditionally learn how to draw first. First, freshmen always learn how to draw with pen and paper and markers first. But now we're transitioning to just straight. People are getting iPads so much these days that, mm -hmm. um, and they they just want to do iPad stuff, and it's very similar to um, pen and paper, as as you know. So now we're we're starting to not use pen and paper anymore, and we're starting to go straight into iPad. Um, mm -hmm. And so now why? There's there's several reasons why. Because number one, we feel like my my boss, he feels like, look, um, the the it's digital, it's a digital world. Markers are old hat. Um, uh, on top of that, it costs a lot of money for the students. And um, and if you want to get environment, you want to talk environmentally friendly as well. That's another thing. And in generally in graphic, I'm uh, not graphic um, product design studios. You can bring in your iPad. Generally speaking. That's not the case for automotive design. Automotive design, they don't allow you to bring anything. So, but if if people are allowed to bring in their their iPads, then it's relevant to learn it at school and bring bring that knowledge into your workplace. Here's another reason that uh, my boss is into this iPad stuff. I teach my kids, my kids, my students to to trace stuff, tricky stuff like cars is tricky or World War aircraft. Aircraft in 3D in 3D is very difficult because those wings are at weird angles and it's it's a real pain in the neck to draw aircraft in 3D. And I just say, all right, guys, if you want to draw an aircraft, just trace the darn thing because why go the old way and just learn everything from like scratch, like really from scratch? Uh, you know, for example, you know, you'd have art classes where you have to draw the still life of the apples and stuff. Well, now we've got all this technology. Why not just take a photograph of the apple and basically trace it or do whatever you need with it digitally? So, so I don't know. That's just some philosophies that we have at, at our school. We're developing actually at our school. Um, yeah, I kind of lost it a little bit there. No, oh, yeah, I, I don't actually know. The students know more than me about what the drawing. <clears throat> I know that they do, you know, one D drawing and and they get into, you know rendering and things like that but um i actually think it's kind of traditional at san jose state markers right guys you guys are using markers and I, i'm sure they have I'm, I'm not sure which class it is but you do have a photoshop specific class right or no no they don't okay don't. so you don't okay yeah so um, it's my class, but my class covers so much <laughs> that it's like, really, like I said, last class, you could have a, a whole class on Photoshop. Oh, it's, gosh, yeah. It's just so, such an amazing software. And yeah, well, it's it's not just about learning the the buttons and the, the, but it's also about like, you know, we do have to get back to basics, back to light sources and how shadows work and stuff like that. Um, so it, that's all, it's all tied in. You know, yeah. Um, so if I'm teaching how to render, I'm not just teaching what buttons to press and what things to press, but also, well, you got to watch your light source. You got to watch, you know, um, ambient light. Uh, there's there's a lot. It gets it's, it's super super deep. <laughs> yeah, and that's what makes the the drawing look so good. All these little highlights and details you're putting in. That's what really makes these simple sketches and they the sketches themselves look looked good but then when you added all of this on it I'm like oh yeah I can really see how these speakers look it's really cool yeah yeah thank you I mean, it's about it's you know unfortunately it all comes down to money um because your boss wants to save he doesn't want to pay you um 50 100 150 bucks an hour and just um and spend all that time on something that's not really going to be useful mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to be as efficient as possible to um you know, to maximize his or her, well, just to, just to maximize our time. Mm -hmm. and, um, so this is a very fast, effective way um, to 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 you know draw draw and and then render quickly. So you know, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got basically ten rough ideas in the space of an hour and a half because I spent a half an hour drawing before I came in here, and um, and you make a lot more money that way too. I think, I think, I don't know. We might, have, you, there might be different opinions. Joanne, you probably might have a different opinion on that. I don't know. No, I think it's awesome. I, um, it makes complete sense. I mean, 
being able to it's this is this is something I just say to everyone this he's making it look a lot easier than it is. Um, but being able to sketch and get down ideas and then really to make them kind of sing a bit more a lot more in Photoshop is is a great it's an amazing skill I think if you can do this you know this is something to aspire to it's um getting comfortable in Photoshop is key because all the subtleties of the brushes and the, the hardness and the, the different things you were demonstrating is um, take some experience and practice to get to know wh which brush to use when and things like that. But um, I, I agree. I think doing, I mean, adding this, the highlights and everything in Photoshop, it definitely um, adds a uh, an amazing element to these sketches. So I, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and it, on top of that, and here's, here's, here's probably the most important thing I can ever suggest to any young designer. Um, uh, you know, some people have to sketch, some people don't, but I'm, I'm going to say some people hate sketching. Some of my students hate sketching like, oh man, do I have to sketch? I really like the CAD and I like that. And I'm like, no, dude, you do whatever you want, whatever you like, do. Um, if you want to be a CAD specialist, go for it. You want to be sketching. But let me just say this, enjoy it. I mean, if, if, if change your mind, sometimes because sketching is, is important, um, you don't have to do it, but it's important. It helps with your portfolio and it helps you get jobs. And even if you don't like it, trick yourself into liking it um, because it's such a beneficial thing. Um, I remember when I, I, when I was at school, I was just medium at, at school in my like uh, June um, freshman, sophomore in my sophomore-ish year I was kind of medium and then but I knew I had it in me I knew I wanted to get good and then there I was working on a homework assignment on um, one evening and suddenly some things were clicking I was actually doing a decent drawing it was a chair and a chair design thing and actually I was like damn actually I'm doing kind of a decent drawing here and um and that evening I had that clicking moment and um so I, I did a nice page of of chairs and uh and then, so I went on, I did another page because we had to do two pages and I did that and I did another page and that was even better. And it's funny how you have these life moments, these clicking moments that things just like, I don't know if you remember being at school, like, oh shoot, I now get algebra or I now get trigonometry or something. And it's like that for sketching. You have these incremental moments. You'll stay static. You'll stay consistent. You'll be not improving much, but then you'll have this moment where suddenly you learn something and you're better. And then at that point, you'll stay consistent, but better for a little while. And then you'll have find another thing and you'll, it's, it's, um, and never give up. That's the thing, you know, uh, just never give up. And yeah. 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 I love that advice. I think I had, uh, <clears throat> uh it's interesting. It's, it's, uh, I had the clicking moment more with Adobe Illustrator. Oh yeah. But I, I was in it so much with the soft goods design. Yeah. So it's also like just what you're in so much, you get really used to it. Um, yeah. And so it becomes like part of your brain and you just know what to do. Really, you're absolutely right, Joanne. And uh, that Illustrator is another great example. Uh, yeah. You had a clicking moment. Can you tell me about your clicking moment with the Illustrator? Or did you I have feel like one? it was a little, it was more, let's see, it was, it was getting into like, I, I kind of did have like a little bit of a plan when I would set out to do these, these specs. And so like, once you kind of know, it's almost like a recipe. It's like, you've gone through your recipe and uh, when you go through it more than once, you get good at it. But if there was, um, it's hard for me to remember one moment exactly. I didn't have quite the epiphany, like the religious experience you had. Yeah. But um, it was really in the Acme Made, you know, in that in in the years at Acme Made, because I I was just on it so much. I was I was able to just be, become really comfortable in it. Um. So yeah, I guess it wasn't one moment, just more gradual for me. But actually, Fahad has a question. Do you want to ask a question, Fahad? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if uh, is the like the Photoshop file, is this something that you would be allowed to share just so you can like, like yeah. kind of like tear it apart and like look at how you've separated the files? Totally. Out? 
Right Absolutely. I can send this to Joanne. I can send my the layered file to Joanne and you guys can have at it. Totally. Oh, that would be, that's a great suggestion, Fahad, actually, because just being able to look through. Yeah, that's a, that's an awesome idea. Um, Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, yeah no, no problem. Um, hey, Joanne, remind me, I, I'll probably remember myself, but in case I forget, remind me at the end. Um, sure. I want to tell you my, my illustrator moment. It, it's quite an, an daunting um, software, to be honest, um, <laughs> illustrator. And so anyway, this is back in the time that I was talking about. Um, I was in my sophomore year and there's this, and I, I don't, I'm going to show my age. I don't care. I'm an old guy. I'm really, I'm, I'm old. I'm old, but funky. <laughs> um, so I, I graduated in 2000 from my, from my university. And so, you know, when I was a sophomore, you know, I, I'm talking like late, late 98 ish, whatever that type of time. So computers were not heavily used in my, in school. Um, students didn't have them much, but there's this Romanian dude who, who was a big computer guy, big CAD, um, CAD guy. And, and so he was always using computers. And so he was one of the very few that did anyway, he managed to get me a good, uh, not a good, a computer cheap because he also worked at a computer store and, um, he got me a computer. And so, okay. So we have to do the, for the coursework, we have to do this stuff called, um, a package drawing, which is basically showing all the internal components. So you draw, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's a cut cross section of a, of, of a product design. And, and so everyone was there on these big A2 size piece of paper and drawing them with pen and ink. And you can imagine what a pain that is. You know, you smear that, you are angry. <laughs> and, and you gotta be so careful and you gotta have a piece of uh, toilet paper or, or um, paper towel under your hand all the time so you don't smear. Anyway, super old fashioned, but this guy gave me this computer. And so he's, he gave me all the, the hot, I mean, the, um, the fake soft, not fake, um, pirated software back in those days, we all had pirated software. Anyway, so Photoshop and Illustrator. So he gave me photo, uh, Illustrator and, um, oh, and so what I did was, you know what? And, and, and at this point I was very gung ho. I was I was in school and I was I was like all right now I'm gonna be an ass kicker I'm not messing around um, I I got this bug and now I'm gonna be a dominator on this and so I was like I'm gonna try to kick everyone's butt I know I'm I'm super competitive like that sometimes and um, so that was my attitude and so I said how can I kick everyone's butt on this package drawing and I said I'm gonna use Illustrator so because Illustrator is perfect for package drawing and. Um, Okay, where am I? So I I I um I started I started um trying to do this drawing in, in Illustrator and I did it. I spent all night. I spent two nights doing it. I had a little bit of sleep in between, but it was like all nighter stuff. And I was slowly getting the the hang of Illustrator. So you know, I probably spent twenty four hours or forty hours. Maybe I had a, few, a couple hours break, but forty hours solid hardcore learning illustrator and this is before even youtube and stuff um so anyway i just did it i kept um kept at it and i just finally figured out how to do basic illustrator in in those 40 hours and that is right now i'm teaching illustrator for my students and so that's what i'm telling they're like ah oh, illustrator so hard and such pain and i said yeah guys but honestly this is how i learned it i just forced myself to do um you know all those hours just push all those hours and and that's how i learned it and so I, that's my little, that's my little thing. <laughs> okay, so, you know, um, at the beginning, I was saying I like to do things as a factory. I like to do all like one thing at many times. And that's why I did all the arrows at the same time, because I'm using the same brush. And, and I could just like, I don't have to keep changing brushes. I did all the arrows at the same time. Um, then I went into using airbrush. You'll see what's going to happen after I start cutting it away. But then I did all the airbrush, you know, and at the very beginning, you saw me do all the blobs of black. And um, it's because it's efficient. And, um, you know, I, I don't like wasting time on stuff. And so you just want to be as efficient as you possibly can. And therefore, yeah, if that, that makes sense. So just like, yeah, just basically work like a factory worker with those those blobs of black did you just add those as kind of like a like preliminary drop shadow 
Uh, no, actually, I just used the airbrush. It, I had no intentions of drop shadow. What I wanted to do was I just wanted to um, give each one a little pop, just like give it a little focus. That's that's all I really wanted to do. Just uh, give it a black splotch on each one. Therefore, I could really add more reflections. You would be able to see the reflections more clearly, if that makes sense. Okay, okay, now I'm going in an eraser because I'm kind of, okay, so this, you see I'm clicking on and off. This is all this airbrush I added. And because it's basically this airbrush is to fill up um, these arrows. So that's the layer. I'm gonna go for an eraser, which is E for eraser. You see that little thing, let's test it. Yeah, there, this is gonna be the easiest way. And I'm just gonna erase out all this. So you see, I can stick with the eraser brush for the next 20 minutes. So while I erase all this stuff, instead of flitting around, just, it's, um, yeah, I love being efficient about things. It's, it's actually really fun. Well, when I was a student as well, I had to work in a factory to, you know, help pay for stuff. And so um, I guess that was part of my inspiration for working like a factory worker. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just, all I'm doing right now is I'm popping out the, um, the, the arrows because I just put a little swash of airbrush in there on each one. And now I'm just going around all the arrows. And as I say, don't get too stuck in, in trying to be precise. This is, I got a couple of students who are like really like super, I don't know what you call it, but you know, just super uh, strict about their drawings. I'm like, no, chill out on these drawings um, for now. Uh, you can you can get stiff when 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 you have to, but at these early stages, we're only in week three of our semester. Really, just be loose, and um, sometimes it's hard to get out of that habit. And Brooke, right now you're erasing like the the just the layer right under the arrows. Is that right? Or... Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's why it's not. So it's turning gray yeah. instead of white. So yeah, this is this is the the white airbrush. Oh, layer. gotcha. Okay. That's the white airbrush. And then I think underneath is my white arrows. Where's my white arrows? Oh, there. There's my white arrows. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, but here's my airbrush layer. And so I'm just erasing it all out. And notice I don't really care about getting out of the. Well, actually, that one's pretty ugly. I am going to care about that. I do care a little. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do care a little bit, but generally um, I try to be loose. But yeah, no, the purpose of this is just to show you what you can do in Illustrator. And um, just a quick overview, because what are we? Oh, we're nearly out of time. So, hey, this worked out quite good as far as time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is what you can do in um, in about an hour uh, <laughs> if you have twenty years of experience. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, actually. So in the last minute, I, I got a question for you in the last minute. Do you want to answer it? Yeah, please. I, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm good for time. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm wondering if you can make the background a little bit white, whiter, and to use those shadows. Can you, yeah. Can you able to using yeah. some tool to adjust that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there. Okay. Um, wait. Yeah. I think. Wait. 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 Okay. Here's. Get rid of those. I think this is the. Okay. Uh, let's take away the black blobs and let's take away my um, uh, um, light source in my there. And the light source is just above that one, I think. And let's just click on this and click right here. Okay, here is the raw drawing without any black splotches, without without my, my um, light source stuff. Um, Let's see down here. Here's my black splotches that somebody was asking about right here. You see that when I did those little, you could see it right in this thumbnail where I did those little black splotches. Um, that's, that's why I did them. So it pops off each one of my little products. Um, let's just get back. Oh, okay. And I need this layer to be turned on to define, you see, so for example, in this little area where there's a bunch of little vents, it's covered up. Um, so I had to use another, I duplicated this layer up here. So I have a layer underneath right here, which you can clearly see, but then this one on top, I have to turn it on so you can see the details. 
is, is that is that what you were asking about basically um um yeah thank you thank you for so so much for exp, exp, explaining everything how how it works how the lighter works i think the overall effect is really amazing oh wow, thank you um so i'm going to turn all these layers on and i'll save this uh, that doesn't do anything. I'm going to save this as a, a Photoshop file and share it with uh, Joanne, and um, she can share it with you. I, I didn't get into one final thing, which I should have. You see how I have some little annotations here? Um, concentric circles I have written there in shelf. Um, I really like to fill my page up with, oops, oh, no, that looks cool. That's a mistake. That's a happy mistake. <laughs> you know, sometimes those happy mistakes are really cool. That's not, that's not getting into art. But anyway, let's just undo. Adding annotations makes you look smarter. <laughs> so I'm a real dummy. And when I start writing some, some stuff, explaining stuff, and I start going under the source and looking up the most complicated words, then I look really smart. So do a lot of writing and describe stuff <laughs> about your drawings, uh, about your designs. But I didn't get to that. No, that's an awesome, awesome tip. Um, OK, well, it's 11. I would say. If anyone has any more questions, you can also write to me and I'll forward them to Brooke. Yep. And man, this was just amazing, Brooke. I am, it is just so cool to see how you work. I'm really inspired. Like I wanna just spend some time, more time in Photoshop, just trying yeah. out everything because uh, I'll say too that, you know, Photoshop is, I mean, it's just getting more and more powerful every year. So like yep. every year when I teach this class, I'm like, oh my gosh, the, the tools have changed <laughs> a little uh -huh. again. And I'm like, ah, um, I'm, it's like hard to keep up with it if I'm not using it every day. I'm going to shamelessly um, share my um, Instagram so you guys can see my Instagram. Oh, that'd um, be great. Okay, um, be, uh, so my Instagram is, um, be, this is my name and it's just at, Brooke Banham, B-A-N-H-A-M, B-R-O-O-K-B-A-N-H-A-M. That's my Instagram because I'm a shameless, I, I have so few followers that I, I have to grab anything that I can get, so. Oh no, we'll definitely follow. That's that, You guys should follow for inspiration and, and tips and, and everything. Um, yeah, this has just been great. And thank you so much for your time. And um, like I said, everybody, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I definitely feel like I could watch another hour of this. It was very, it was very fun watching. It, it's great. So, um, and I, I definitely learned a lot too. So thank you so much, Brooke. Really appreciate yeah. it. My pleasure, pleasure, Joanne. So, you know, um, if you want me to come on, I'm, I'm here. Um, so just shout out to me and I can give you guys another lesson. Oh, that would be amazing. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah, everyone, thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Class, thank you for letting me um, blah, blah in your ears a little bit. And uh, I had fun. So I uh, thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Give him a thank head. You. Thank you, you very much. A virtual um, high so five much. or a clap. And yeah. Oh, if you, you do a high five, if you do a high five, you have to touch the screen, literally. OK. Like <laughs> yeah. My, 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 my hand disappears because of my virtual uh, background. But sure, sure. Um, yeah, this was awesome. So thank you so much, Brooke. All right, I'm out of here. Bye bye. Okay, everyone. I'll send you the recording too. So you'll have it. You can always, you, you might need to use, you could use it for your own purposes or whatever too. Thanks, Joanne. Cool. Don't All right. Have a great right. time. Oh, Dave, Thanks. talk Thanks to you so soon. Much. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Wow. That was just awesome, guys. I, I just have to say, don't be um, intimidated because he is really like the best Photoshop. Well, pretty much the best drawer, uh, sketcher and Photoshop artist I've met in my career, um, which is now, I don't know, over 15 years. So I've met a lot of people and um, yeah, it's just amazing what he can do. It makes it look so easy, but it's, it's really fun. I mean, it's, if you have fun doing, you know, what you're doing, it really shows in your work. And I just love how he kind of took those sketches that were really loose and made them really more defined in, in a short amount of time. So I hope that was really inspiring for you guys. I'll, I'll share the video, I'll share the file. It's something you can get into 
as much as you want. <clears throat> Obviously, we don't have an assignment that's uh, that's actually um, doing what he demonstrated, although I'm thinking it might be cool to have an assignment like that for future years. Um, so yeah, it's, it's but it's it's really great to see all the different things you can do. And even he, you know, was like, wow, there's a lot of layers and there's a lot of, it's it's so complicated when you get in it. It's, it's definitely difficult to, um, to do demos in Photoshop. I thought he did a really good job because your brain is so immersed in doing the Photoshop itself that then to explain it out loud, it's almost like, like, you know, doing the um, rubbing your tummy, patting your head thing. Um, it's probably easier for him because he's so good at Photoshop. But um, so thank you guys for coming at 10 instead of eight. Most of you guys were able to do that. That's awesome. And let's take, well, actually, let's not take a break. I'm just going to keep going because I, I have a little bit more and then we could be done for the day. So what we're going to just go over real quick is uh, the next assignment. So go ahead and share my screen now. So I'll, I'll mention one thing too about the quiz. Someone brought to my attention, one of the questions may be wrong in that quiz. It asked about RGB mode in Photoshop. And um, I think that the answer was, should we use RGB in Photoshop? And the answer should be yes, but I think it said false. So um, I'll probably throw the question out. Don't worry about it. The main point is, for our purposes, we're working in RGB just because that's kind of like the standard for Photoshop. But whenever you wanna print something out, and usually like for a, port a portfolio, you wouldn't be printing from Photoshop anyway, but when you, when you go to print, you would wanna convert it to CMYK because that's how the printer takes the, the data and puts you know the amount of ink on the page. So that's kind of the difference there. Um, so assignment three. So we're going to go in um, to the layout of our portfolio. So we're gonna get over the next week, some inspirational image or some examples, basically either look at websites, other student portfolios, art books, magazines, anything that features photos and text in an organized manner is a good source of inspiration. We're gonna be showing the examples you brought in class. So you don't have to submit anything for this. However, if you can't be in class, you, you can submit it to me um, in the JPEG or PDF format. So what you would do is just, if it's an art book, you can take a picture of the page that you like the layout of, send it to me, or you can send me um, the link or a screenshot of a portfolio page you found. There are a whole bunch of, um, there are a bunch of places to find great portfolios. And that's, if it were me, I would probably look at portfolios just because it's gonna be so close to like the kind of format that you're, you're looking for. So I would go to. A quick question, these um, reference images, could we just show you images on our computer or do we have to bring printed out or uh, actually? Oh, you can show copies? me on your computer. Actually, okay. it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing to note too, that um, we're gonna be in person next week. I just realized that. So I could, um, and, and I'll be on Zoom too. If some of you are, you know, had to pivot and you're like not in San Jose and you're not going to be there next week in person, that's fine. So if you're one of those people, you can show me on your computer or if we're, if we're there together, we'll just bring it to class. And if, if it's a digital thing, we'll just go around. We have, we'll just share screen and show and um, proje project it up onto the screen. So are you guys familiar with Coraflot? Okay, cool. This is a great website. So you guys are gonna, I, I'm still on this website. Um, 
it's great for looking for jobs, internships, and it's great at looking at portfolios. So you can go into designers. And if I go down, I wanna go down to like industrial designer. And now I can look through portfolios. Let's see here. Just looking at, here's some, a soft goods designer. And so you can kind of get some idea of layout from this. There's also what they do too is, um, I just wanna make sure that they all do look a little bit different because <laughs> I actually don't look on here for uh, portfolios too much, but if they have a uh, kind of prescribed template, then it wouldn't be as good, but let's see. Oh yeah, no, it is a little different. Um, so that's a source of inspiration. There's, um, there's also Behance. I think you may have heard of that. It's also a good place to find portfolios. So you can, let's see. So um, yeah, there's a lot there. So it, the, the, other, the other source of inspiration is looking at um, some of the examples I have. I have some examples in actually in our modules. Um, if I go to modules and I go to the very bottom, instead of showing those, I'm actually gonna go ahead and Oh, I actually don't have those out, but yeah, so I'll show these. And I'll also um, email you some, some examples from last year. Oh. There's a, Rectilinear, curvilinear, speed form, hanger project, product redesign. So these are two pages. It's it's kind of set up like a double, you know, a double spread here. 11 by 17 next to each other. So this person, I'll go into the grid. I'm going to do a whole lecture next week on the grid. So when you bring your um, when you bring your examples, I'll show you how the grid kind of works on your particular examples, and you'll be mapping that out, and then you can actually translate that grid into InDesign, which is really cool. So every single thing we look at, it's just a grid. It's just it's just defined boxes that is kind of a prescribed like format from page to page. Okay, so look at those. They're, like I said, they're in the modules. You can look at those at the bottom, very bottom of modules down here. And then um, look at art books and in magazines and just look at the layout. Don't look at, don't worry about the pictures. Right now we're just looking at the layout. Look at the layout, the font, how big the size of thing is, how the spacing is get an idea of what like you think is going to like make your work sing. And this part is actually a lot of fun because I think in choosing your layout, you, you tell a little bit about your personal taste. So um, originally actually last year, I think they thought about maybe changing it to having everyone have the same layout. And I said, no, because, <laughs> because that's part of the fun of making your own portfolio is picking your own layout and, and really putting yourself into it. And, showing your personality a bit. So that's the one assignment. And then there's actually another assignment. 
and it's um it's number four it's a portfolio project list i actually need to resend you the list because the link is not working on here it doesn't uh it didn't translate when I copied the course over, so I have to re I have to update that. But basically, what it is is it's a Excel or Google Sheet, and it's listing out your projects. And so, what it, this this assignment is about actually writing down what's going to be included, so that like if you had a ton of things to scan in, you would know what you're going to be doing, and you kind of have like a a playlist of how you're going to get it all done. Um, really quickly, I'm going to look for it because I just want to show you guys really quickly. Got to go back to, so wait, let me stop share. <laughs> um, and then I'll find that file. And then does anyone, while I'm looking for it, does anyone have any questions about anything? Those two assignments? Uh, professor? Yes. Um, does it have to be like for the uh, for the examples that we have to bring into the next class? Can they be like product magazines? Like for like if if you just like like the look of something? Yeah, yeah, it can be just a product magazine. It doesn't have to be a website. Like I just some people prefer going into digital, and then others like just analog books. You know, so yeah, whatever works for you. Right. Um. Cool. Yeah, that's a good question. So here it is. Okay, project master checklist. So I remember this forum had some trouble um, and I'm gonna remake it. Um, I'm gonna remake it in Google Sheets. Does everybody, just a show of hands, who, ver who uses the G Suite Google Sheets versus Excel? Who would rather, oh, I think I'm frozen, hold on. Okay, I'm good. Um, I, I use the G Suite and I find, well, there's pros and cons of both, but um, I'm gonna use that because I like how it's in the cloud. I can always find it, but uh, let me go back to reshare my screen. It's right here. So basically this is what the sheet's gonna look like. It's super simple. Don't be in, uh, thinking it's, it's, a, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's not gonna be a lot of work. What it is is um, for your final portfolio, you're listing out what projects you're gonna have. Um, the other thing that I'm finalizing is how many projects you're going to have in there. Actually last year, we didn't have five and six, we only had four. We had rectilinear, curvilinear, curvilinear speed form and the Limar helmet project. It was a, a special competition they did and we required them to include that. So it's probably gonna likely be these three plus one more right here. Um, or it actually doesn't, what, what we said was it, it was your three best. So it wasn't necessarily these three. It was your three best plus that helmet project. So I will clarify that, but when I send the sheet out, um, it's gonna have it kind of, yeah, you're gonna, um, I'll have it set up like project one through four probably. Okay, so you, you will, you'll pick your projects, the ones you think are the best. Um, and you're going to write some notes. You're gonna probably have like, I need, need to scan in, you know, sketches for this. I need to scan in, take photos for this one. And as you go, you'll know how to keep track of it. So I'm gonna set this, this uh, file up for you. Um, the final presentation, so like the table. So wait, let me just, where are these tabs? This table, it's actually not relevant to us. So I'm also gonna edit that out. We're not gonna have a table. So it's gonna be more about which projects am I putting in and what do I have for each project? Do I have 10 sketches? Do I have 12? Um, do I actually have models for some of these? So I'm gonna kind of redo this form to make it easier for you guys to keep track of. Um, I'll be, I'll kind of redo that um, over the weekend and then 
yeah, if I might, I might actually bump this assignment back just since the form isn't ready. So this one, actually, I think I'll make it be due the following week, not next week. So the only one you guys are going to have due for next week is the assignment three, which is bringing in your inspiration. So it's pretty easy, but um, when we meet next week in person, it's room 205, art 205 at 10. Uh, I'll also be there obviously at eight for the other class. Um, so I'll just be there and I will be doing a, a lecture on the grid. And then the following week we'll, we'll be diving into, into InDesign. So, so, one question. Question. so next class will be starting at 10. Um, are you, yeah, so it'll be this, just like how we normally have, I'll have the 8 a.m. section and then I'll have the 10 a.m. section. I'll have both sure. sections sure. next week. Thank you. Yeah. So if you're in 8 a.m., I'll definitely plan on seeing you at San Jose State at 8 a.m. On, on Friday. And I will definitely send a, a reminder out to everyone. I know it's, it's, it's a little, uh, <laughs> a, a little bit of a ping pong game, like keeping up with all the different, um, the, the different things that we're doing each week <laughs> with the campus changing it to in-person and everything. But I'm really glad we're going back. I think it's great, especially for this class. I did have it listed as a hybrid class, I believe. So I don't, I, I think I'm going to, I'm probably going to try to go up every single Friday, but um, I uh, I did have it where I was going up every other Friday. So I can kind of take a poll and see what you guys want to do. I'm really open, but let's just plan on meeting in person this next Friday. Sound good, everyone? One more question. Yeah, go ahead. Um... Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Will. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I was wondering what the room number is when we meet. Oh, yeah, so it's ART 205. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then um, as far as I know, I'm going to get confirmation, but the scanner should be available after, after February 14th. So I believe if you go in on the 15th, it will be ready for you. I'm going to get a confirmation on that, okay, before anyone goes over there. Do you happen to know what size that scanner is? No, I'll also find, I'll find out the size, but I probably won't know until I, until I show up there because I actually have never seen the scanner in person. I would imagine it's a big scale sc uh, scanner. Okay. I, I believe uh, at least 11 by 17. At least, well, a lot of our uh, materials say we have to use marker paper that was 14 by 17. Hopefully that'll fit. But yeah, as you said, we'll see. What size I think it'll is. fit. Um, but I'm not positive. But um, and the question is, Art 205 on the second floor. Uh, good question. I am not positive on that either. Does anyone know? Yes, it yes, is. It's on yeah. second floor. Okay, great. Your key cards should work for getting into everything. Uh, the, 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 the because the key card has been changed. So if anyone wants the new key card, they can just apply it uh, over the min the administration department. Otherwise, it's a lock. The door will be locked. Okay. Are you talking about our SGSU card? Yeah, yeah, it has been recently has been a little bit updated for the new version of IG. Your one from last semester should work. Okay, I had no idea they changed the key cards. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have a new key card, so. Yeah, I, I have the same key card from last year, so hopefully mine will work. But the cool thing about Art 205 is we're right by the office, so they, they have those master keys. And if we have any trouble, they'll just open it with the master key. If you have any trouble getting in, you can email me and I'll come get you. Um, but I think you'll be okay. Um, 
Yeah, I didn't see an announcement about that, but I definitely uh, get a lot of things, so I I could have missed it. But I I feel like yeah, you as students would would probably, you know, that would have been good good to have that announcement. Um, For those of us in who are enrolled in section one, but come to section two, is it still okay to come to section two? Yeah, because you asked in advance, right? Yeah, you yeah. and one other person. Yeah. So uh, that's still fine to come to section two. Yeah, it was the other person. Yeah. And then okay. this is a bit more of like a personally to me thing, but I was marked absent for one of the days. And I think it might just be because I'm in the other section. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Which day was it? I'll go back and correct it. I can go check. Because sometimes I mark people and then I go back, but I, uh, because I'm not used to, <clears throat> who are the two people? It's Remington and who are the two people that come to the afternoon? Uh, me, Aton. And Aton, okay. And me, Remington. Yeah, Remington and Aton. Okay. I'll always just leave yours as there. Um, I'll mark you present in the, in the morning class until for, if for some reason I have to change it. I'll just do that as a default. Um, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds good. If you have any, <clears throat> if you have anything that, you know, like your semester started off remote and you therefore ma made plans to be remote or something like you had a living situation where you needed to be remote, just let me know because I had that last semester and it's, it's no problem. I just always have my class on Zoom. It, it's a bummer for you a little bit because sometimes it's better to be in person, but it's totally doable to do the class um, by being on, on Zoom. So um, a lot of the, you know, so just let me know if anything like that comes up. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I know that was, I feel like we, we did a lot today and, uh, uh, yeah, if, if you have questions for Brooke, Brooke or questions about the assignment or anything regarding class, uh, let me know. I'll definitely be sending out a, a, um, an announcement with um, any information about uh, confirmation on using the scanner and things like that. So look for that for me. And thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming and being attentive today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you, Professor. Great time. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I, I really liked his demo. It was solid. Um, I put it in the chat, but I believe it's the 28th was the day I was marked absent. Okay, cool. I'll go back and change that. Um, yeah, thanks for telling me. Um, because it does, like, it does, like, add up for your attendance the little attendance grade which isn't like a huge part of your grade but yeah it should be accurate so thanks for telling me yeah i'll go ahead and change that norris thank you very much thanks so much hi aaron do you have a question or just staying on okay